Estimates are that there have been more than 7,000 shipwrecks on the Great Lakes. Most of those were not far out to sea, but rather close in to shore. Today, almost anyone can become a wreck hunter from their own home computer. Google Earth is the tool, and the combination of greater clarity of the water of the lakes and higher resolution of the satellite images lets us spot shipwrecks from space. Here's how you do it. First, download Google Earth Pro into your computer. It's a free utility. Now open Google Earth. Locate the search box in the upper left and type in Lake Huron, for example. This will be a good place for us to start. Next, find the zoom control on the upper right. Select an area you'd like to scan. In this case, we'll use my favorite area along the west shore of Saginaw Bay. Notice I already have a wreck pinned on the east shore. You can pin your sightings for easy access later. We'll do that in a little while. You can remove and add just by checking them off. Let's look at one of my earlier discovered wrecks. We'll zoom in on it. Here we are. One of the keys is to use a year when the water was low and the satellite resolution was high. Normally that, as of 2021 when this video was made, are the years between 2013 and 2015. For this one we're using 2015. Next, zoom down to an altitude just above 1,000 feet as shown in the ILT window right here. Plus, you have to look for a Karen. No, not that kind of a Karen. A Karen is a term used in geology, meaning a formation or shape which appears to be man-made. Okay, now let's go on a wreck hunt. This is the area that I like to start best. It's uh, below Point of Sable and, and just kind of above uh, Point Augre. We'll zoom in here. And you can see I didn't center it exactly in that area, so once we get down to a good altitude, we'll kind of move over a little bit here. And once again, this altitude is a little too high, so we got to go down to that altitude that's just above a thousand feet. Notice here that this image is divided between uh, one that was scanned with waves and one that is scanned in smooth water. We prefer the smooth water. Now, we'll set our time back and see which date works best. Now, let's see, that's, eh, that's a good one. That's probably 2015, and let's go back here. And whoa, there we go. This is 2013. Yeah, that's gravy. Look at all that beach and sand and how shallow that water is. Now let's adjust our altitude one more time and we want to get right down there below that critical altitude that's just barely above a thousand feet. This will work just fine. Now I use a uh, stylus on my computer and a pad. So what I can do is make minor adjustments and I also can skid the image along so that we can see just about everything. Along we go. Keep in mind now we're looking for something that's about the size and the shape of a human-made object. And you have to look very closely. Sometimes these objects in the sand can... Oh, wait a minute. There we go. What's that? Let's zoom in and see what we can find. Down we go. 
Starting to look a lot like a shipwreck, isn't it? How about that? We found a shipwreck. That didn't take long. Of course, I knew where it was anyway. But just for fun, there it is. Now, we're going to use the measuring app. And you can see here that uh, we can do it in feet or miles or yards. We're going to do feet. Let's measure it down, and it shows us... Eh, I don't think that's quite long enough for what I think that image is. So what we can do now to get a more accurate representation, let's zoom down a little bit closer, really enlarge this image. Because if we do, that brings all the scales up to a nice, tidy amount. Here we can see the bow perfectly. So we'll start there and go all the way to the stern. And you can see here we got about 101 feet. Now, the next thing we got to do is we got to mark this one. So we go up here to our little marker plug, to our little pin. Put that in there. And then you can go up here and type in if you've got a name or if you just want to call it rec number one. There we go. Hit OK. And boom, it's right there. Now we can zoom back up again and continue our search. Come back here and look at this one later. This can be addictive, folks. You'll find yourself doing this in the middle of the night and searching every foot of coastline looking for anything that looks suspicious or maybe could be a wreck. So move up here around the point. When you do that, you want to pull out a little bit. Take a look at the reefs. That would be a good spot to fetch up a boat. Coming down here, you can see there are a lot of natural geological formations. Sometimes they take on the basic appearance of something that might be man-made. But then when you zoom in on them, you find out that, well, no, I don't think so. And it's a process of eliminating what you see and going down and selecting what may be or what may not be. You see here we have a couple that are way out to see there a little bit, and they're in deeper water. Let's zoom in and see what we can see. No, these are not Karens. These are normal geological formations, probably uh, sandbars or ruts in the, in the bottom. So now let's keep, stand, let's keep scanning upward here. So scanning we will go. And after a while, you start to look at just about everything as if it, oh, could that be? Or, well, I guess not. We'll go past that and so on. I always scan outward a ways and look at these shallow reefs. With the water this low as it was in 2013, it exposed a lot of the reefs that would have been catching vessels in a storm. You see here, this is another geological natural formation that kind of took on straight lines. You don't want to go too fast. If you go too fast, you could fly right over something. But how many wrecks are there on the lakes? Well, if you've got a really good eye at discerning them, you might stop right here. This is Whitestone Point. And if you look closely, you see this. There we go. Let's zoom in on that. And as you get closer, you start to see ribs and a keel. This is another shipwreck. This is the shipwreck of the cyclone, believe it or not. So let's get her a measurement here. That's pretty badly broken up. But that's a good distance for a uh, small schooner, at least in pieces. And being in that shallow, whew. All right, the next thing we probably want to do is Go ahead and mark this one so we don't forget it. So let's get our pin, mark it, and give it a name. Type in rec number two. There we go. Hit OK. Boom, and it's marked. 
And that's how we do it. Good luck with your shipwreck hunting. You'll have fun.